I represent only employees because they're the foundation of America and they're the foundation of American business. Unfortunately, they're also the same people that are abused by the American business. Without them, the employer wouldn't be as profitable, but the employer puts the bottom line over the employee's rights. I see that the laws of the United States tend to be more friendly towards businesses rather than the interests of the employees. For example, in my line of practice dealing with employment law, employees are capped at $300,000 in non-economic damages, which is pain and suffering and even front pay if they were wronged by their employer. And that doesn't matter how big the employer is. So in a Title VII case for racial discrimination, for example, an employee is only going to be able to recover $300,000 from a mega corporation like Walmart. That's not right. Walmart has been subject to criticism by numerous groups and individuals. Among these are labor unions, community groups, grassroots organizations, religious organizations, environmental groups, and Walmart customers. They have protested against Walmart the company's policies, business practices, including charges of racial and gender discrimination. In 2005, labor unions created new organizations and websites to influence public opinion against Walmart, including Wake Up Walmart and Walmart Watch. In November of that same year, 2005, a documentary film critical of Walmart Walmart, the high cost of low price, was released on DVD. With close to 2.2 million employees worldwide, Walmart has faced a torrent of lawsuits and issues with regards to its workforce. These issues involve low wages, poor working conditions, inadequate health care, as well as issues involving the company's strong anti-union policies. Critics point to Walmart's high turnover rate as evidence of an unhappy workforce, although other factors may be involved. Approximately 70% of its employees leave within the first year. In 2008, Walmart agreed to pay at least $352 million to settle lawsuits claiming that it forced employees to work off the clock. Several lawyers described it as the largest settlement ever for lawsuits over wage violations. Walmart has faced accusations involving poor working conditions of its employees. Walmart has also been accused of ethical problems. It is said that the Walmart employees are gender discriminated when trying to be hired and discriminated against in the work area. Walmart has been accused of allowing undocumented immigrants to work in its stores. On October 23, 2003, federal agents raided 61 Walmart stores in 21 U.S. states in a crackdown known as Operation Rollback, resulting in the arrest of 250 night shift janitors who were undocumented. In 2012, the New York Times reported that Walmart had been made aware eight years earlier that executives of Walmart Mexico its subsidiary in that country had paid millions of dollars in bribes to local officials to expedite permits for construction and operation of its many stores in that country. Critics of Walmart called the homespun stuff a fraud, a calculated strategy to put a human face on a relentlessly profit-minded corporation. What is paradoxical and suspect to people outside Walmart, however, is perfectly normal to the people who work there. It reflects a deal that Sam Walton, Walmart's founder, made with the people who work for him. If you're good to people and fair with them and demanding of them, they will eventually decide that you're on their side, Walton said in his autobiography, Made in America. But the deal was a lot more than just a matter of the occasional visit from Mr. Sam. Walmart demonstrated its concern for workers in many ways that were small but specific. Time and a half for work on Sundays, an open door policy that let workers bring concerns to the managers at any level, the real chance of promotion, about 70% of store managers started as hourly associates. Sam Walton died in 1992, but the language of that deal still peppers the dialogue of Walmart executives and the company's official literature. A quote that runs in large type across the top of a page in Walmart's associate handbook is typical. 
The undeniable cornerstone of Walmart's success can be traced back to our strong belief in the dignity of each individual. That's all changed now. In March 2013, Walmart placed last among department and discount stores in the American Customer Satisfaction Index, the sixth year in a row the company had either tied or taken the last spot. Walmart continues to pay its workers as if their employees don't actually need to eat more than once a week, live in an enclosed space, and on occasion, take their kids to see a doctor. Today, the Insider Exclusive goes behind the headlines in Justice in America, Walmart, and Gary Drake's story to examine how Benjamin Yormack, founder and managing partner at Yormack Employment and Disability Law, successfully represented Gary Drake in a showdown with his corporate giant. Ben Yormack has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best trial lawyers in Fort Myers, in Naples, in Florida, and in the United States. His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that everyone is treated with equal respect and dignity as guaranteed under the Constitution of the United States. He has built a substantial reputation by consistently winning cases other law firms have turned down. His amazing courtroom skills and headline-grabbing success rate continue to provide his clients with the results they need and the results they deserve. This is the Insider Exclusive, live from Fort Myers, Florida. It is my great pleasure to introduce Ben Yormack to the show. Welcome to the show, Ben. Thank you. Tell our audience a little bit about your firm. What type of law does your firm practice? We're a boutique law firm specializing in labor and employment law and also disability law, and we only represent plaintiffs or those who are disabled. Yeah, employees, not the employer. Correct. Why is that? Well, I've always been concerned about the rights of the individual over the rights of the corporation, and I believe that that's a real problem in America. The individuals are overpowered, undermanned, and certainly underfunded. Mm -hmm. Tell us specifically in the employment, er employment law area, what type of cases you generally handle? We handle cases based upon race, gender, uh, disability, national origin, religion, uh, violations of the Family and Medical Leave Act, veterans benefits and disability benefits as well. Uh -huh. Today we are here talking about a case against Walmart. Your client Gary Drake worked for Walmart for what 23 years or something right? That's correct yes. Tell our audience a little bit about his specific case. His case was was a sad story. He had been with Walmart for 23 years had moved with them from California, cross country to Maryland, and then was relocated down to Florida, in Clewiston, Florida. Mm -hmm. When he got to Clewiston is where all of his problems really began. He was a Walmart man through and through, was dedicated to the company, and felt that they were dedicated to him. Uh, unfortunately, nothing could have been further from the truth. As soon as he developed a need for medical leave, he was terminated. Right, and what exactly was that medical leave? His son had returned home from Afghanistan from the war and had developed post-traumatic stress disorder, which in caring for his son, Mr. Drake developed his own set of ailments that required yeah. medical leave. Once he required medical leave, uh, Walmart terminated him. Now, he followed the correct procedure in requesting family medical leave, didn't he? Yes, Gary followed the correct procedure. He had informed his immediate supervisor of his need for leave. They had given him the Family Medical Leave Act paperwork. Gary had filled that out. He went to a doctor. He then went to his doctor, yeah. and the doctor filled out the doctor's portion. So he approved it. It should have been formally approved. Mm -hmm. One day after Walmart received the doctor's certification, they terminated Gary Drake. What do you think the reason for that was? I think as... as unofficially, the, unofficially. I think as the lawsuit made clear that the reason for Mr. Drake's termination was because he requested and needed 
time off, mm -hmm. and that was protected leave under the Family Medical Leave Act. When everybody thinks about Walmart, they think about Sam Walton. They think that here's a guy that really, I think, really cared about employees. There were many people that started with a company many years ago that today are multimillionaires because they bought the stock, right? And we have this impression that this is an all-American company. But the Walmart of today doesn't reflect his values, does it? No, the Walmart of today is a far cry from the Walmart founded by Sam Walton. Uh, it is big American business through and through, which puts the rights of the company far above the rights of the individual worker. Let's talk about the, the lawsuit, the legal challenges you faced. One of the things that I remember reading in your review of the case was the fact that you were surprised that Walmart took this case to court at all because the evidence was clearly there that they had violated the Family Medical Leave Act, right? It was certainly surprising that Walmart took this case almost to trial. The evidence seemed to be very clear. In fact, it was so clear that the plaintiff, Gary Drake, filed a motion for summary judgment, mm -hmm. which basically says that there aren't facts in question, Your Honor, the judge. You should rule in our favor. We were surprised that Walmart had even filed their own motion for summary judgment saying that they would win the case. The evidence just pointed directly to the Family Medical Leave Act as being the proximate cause of Mr. Drake's termination. Walmart alleged that, I'm reading this right here, that he had been absent three days on unreported leave, correct? That's correct. Walmart had Which was a lie. I mean, let's call it like it is, right? It's not true. Mm -hmm. Unreported means that Somebody has gone AWOL. They've mm -hmm. disappeared. They've truly abandoned their position and the employer doesn't know where they are. But mm -hmm. nothing could be further from the truth with Mr. Drake. Do you find that Walmart's the world's largest employer? Do you find that this is their typical legal strategy when employees sue them for legitimate reasons, that they stall, they delay, and they refuse to honor the integrity of employees? I think that that's a real problem with Walmart's defense strategy in, in all of their cases. It seems to be that out of five cases that get brought, they'll fight all five. If they win three and lose two, it's considered just the cost of doing business. Yeah. Why fight them if they could settle them for something reasonable if they've done something wrong? Walmart is known as a corporate animal that does not want a target on its back and to send a message and intimidate workers Mm -hmm. and preclude them from filing lawsuits, they make it known to the general public they will fight each and every lawsuit, no matter whether it has merit or is frivolous. They mm -hmm. fight them the same. It's actually the lawyers that represent them are billing by the hour. So if more lawsuits go in, the more money they make. Isn't that right? That's true, although my friends in the defense bar have said they roll back the prices on the defense counsel as well. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the Family Medical Leave Act, signed into law, what, 1993? Yes. By President Clinton. By President Clinton, yes. What is the Family Medical Leave Act? The Family Medical Leave Act is federal law that allows a worker up to 12 weeks of unpaid leave to care for their own serious health condition or the health condition of a close family member. Mm -hmm. You have to have worked for the company a minimum of 1,250 hours over the previous 12 months. The law also protects service members and affords them 26 weeks of unpaid leave. That was actually signed into law by George W. Bush in 2008. Mm -hmm. And explain that a little bit. What's the difference? The difference between the regular Family Medical Leave Act as applicable to civilians is that the civilian law only affords 12 weeks of unpaid leave, whereas the law FMLA for service members is extended 26 weeks. You're talking about people in the armed forces? In the armed forces, okay. yes. All right, um, and again, FMLA leave is not paid leave, is it? Correct, the FMLA is unpaid leave, but it protects your job. So mm -hmm. when you return from that leave, you must be returned to your job or a substantially similar position yeah. with the same pay. I've seen cases where when someone returns to their so-called job, the job's been eliminated. And this is a reason why the person is terminated, correct? That's correct. The job elimination defense is very common. And where it is actually true, and very often companies have undergone corporate restructuring and there truly isn't a position that is available, that is a valid defense. 
However, that defense is abused where the person on FMLA is singled out for their position to be eliminated simply as a means to terminate the employee. Yeah, now we have talked about the word Family Medical Leave Act. How is family defined? Family is defined as obviously husband and wife, kids, or if you are a guardian and caring for somebody else. Um, the courts have tried to interpret family as broadly as possible while balancing the rights of employers and employees as well. Mm -hmm. Has it been pretty effective, pretty successful? I think for the most part it has. The Family Medical Leave Act was enacted because of a growing need to balance the rights of employees with employers. Mm -hmm. The balance is this, the leave is unpaid but it protects the employee's job. Yeah. So they always have something to come home to and their health insurance cannot be canceled as a result of them taking Family Medical Leave Act. By the leave. way, speaking of being terminated with Gary Drake, how did he find out that he had been terminated? Gary Drake found out he was terminated, I think in one of the more traumatic ways an employee can find out. And he found out through his wife. His wife had gone into the Clewiston, Florida store just to do her regular grocery shopping. And when she had tried to use her employee discount card, mm. the cashier informed her that it was not valid. She thought there must have just been some mistake, as most people would. Went to the store management and they said that Gary had been terminated. Right. What type of illnesses qualify for leave under FMLA? It has to be a serious medical condition to qualify under the Family Medical Leave Act. And that doesn't have to just be a physical condition. It can be mental as well. Mm. Both are covered. It has to generally last longer than three days or require substantial doctor's visits. Mm -hmm. So the common cold and flu are not going to be covered. Can a, an employee use the FMLA more than once? Yes, the employee can use the FMLA up to 12 weeks. It doesn't have to be consecutive weeks. An employee could use, for example, three weeks in September and then need additional time in November. Mm. And that's acceptable as long as um, the employee does not exceed 12 weeks in a given 12-month period. Mm -hmm. The FMLA leave applies. Do you handle a lot of cases where the rights of employees have been abused um, have been violated, if you will, by employers either prior to the leave and requesting the FMLA or after they come back and there's no job? I think the FMLA is one of the most uh, messed up statutes by human resources departments nationwide. Messed up in the sense the way it was written or how it's applied? I think the Family Medical Leave Act is one of the statutes that human resources departments make mistakes on the most. But the statute was, had good intent, correct? Absolutely. The statute had a very good intention and despite the balancing of the needs, human resources departments very often make mistakes in either misinforming the employee that they don't qualify, failing to respond at all to the FMLA request, or simply not returning the employee to the position that they held prior to the leave. Is that because they have corporate policy above them that are saying, we don't care about the FMLA Act? No, I don't think that it's necessarily that higher up corporate policy is to disregard the FMLA. Yeah. I think that at a medium level in the, in the employment uh, hierarchy is where the mistakes get made. It's very rarely the president and CEO saying, let's discriminate and get rid of people that need leave. Yeah. But it's more the people on the ground that say, we need this employee to be present I don't care that he has a medical condition. Right. Someone has to, get to do the job. Somebody has to do the job, and I don't really care yeah. if this guy's sick, injured, or has a family member that's sick or injured. From an employer's standpoint, let's say I'm an employer, someone has to take the leave, and, I, and they're going to be gone 12 weeks. Okay, That's the time they're protected. I have to have someone do the job, so I hire someone. What do I tell that person? This is only a temporary job for 12 weeks. Who's going to take the job? Essentially, the employer would have to inform the replacement employee yeah. that it would likely be a temporary position. Now, the employers have, a, have great latitude to figure out appropriate ways to return the FMLA qualified individual back into their job yeah. or even a comparable job. It does not have to be identical, but any demotion in pay 
upon the return is going to lead in all likelihood to a phone call to an attorney. Yeah. Now, you successfully settled this case right before you went to trial, correct? That's correct. Typically, these cases, I know the settlement is confidential, but typically these cases settle for how is the, the dollar amount determined? Or how are they usually settled? By putting the person back to work? Actually, very rarely are these cases settled by returning the person to work. Um, plaintiff's counsel, such as myself, are really reluctant to have the worker return to what would hostile amount to a hostile work environment yeah. here, where it gives the employer the opportunity to fire the person the right way this time. Yeah. And it would, wouldn't afford the employee any remedy whatsoever. So for that reason, it's typically uh, monetary settlement. And it's the monetary settlement's based on what, like for example, Gary had maybe a retirement fund or something like that, making sure that they get all the benefits that they would have re had he retired. Right? Essentially, the goal of any FMLA lawsuit is to make the wronged plaintiff whole. Yeah, and you were, you were able to do that in this case. We were able to satisfactorily settle the case, yes. Well, the reason we're doing this show is because there is a lot of abuse by HR departments, whether they, it's intentional or not, with people who are, have a legitimate right to the FMLA Act, correct? That's correct. And we want them to know that they have these rights, and we really appreciate you being on this show explaining it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guests and the issues at InsiderExclusive.com. 